Cake Television, K-A-K-E TV, Channel 10, Wichita. I hope we've had a a good station that's provided news that people have been able to rely on us. Good evening. The United States Japan and, and the European occasion with a song. We leave you. Good evening. As a taxpayer, you So the first thing I did was put in news across the board, a half hour every night. Martin Umansky was a dreamer and a doer. We have lots of ego in our industry. It's undeserved. The ego belongs to the medium, television. That's the real charmer. And we, if we work it well, uh, we become very successful. From the beginning, in 1954, he created Cake Television in his image, a strong news department, local programming, and community involvement. I think the thing that made us successful more than anything else, the people we had. I think I'm a very lucky person. I think I, I've been in a profession that I dearly cherish and I've enjoyed every day. Martin Umansky made Cake one of the most successful local stations in the country. And much of that was because his belief that news was the station's most important job. And when you do that job well, the business will flow. Because when you do it well, you serve the community. Martin Umansky was one of those guys, he couldn't stand injustice. And when he learned that Wichita Country Clubs and private clubs were discriminating against blacks, Jews, and those of Lebanese descent, he didn't want the public kept in the dark. He decided to investigate. But if things are not right, if they're not moving the way they should, I can only take so much of it, then I gotta speak out, I gotta do something about it. Umansky also found that Wichita didn't have a restaurant rating system, so how was the public to know if where they were eating was clean? Cake News is presenting a series of reports on restaurants in the Wichita area. And it becomes a financial problem. We lost a lot of money on that restaurant series. We had cancellations that wouldn't quit. As a matter of fact, we have a, we have a very deep an abiding responsibility to do these things. If not, who's going to do them? And then the silverware is put back into a dirty container. And neither was Martin fond of monopolies. And he felt the Wichita Eagle in the 1970s was a monopoly. So what did this television station manager do? He started his own newspaper, the Wichita Sun. It was OK. It was OK. If I, if I were to do it over, it would be on. It would continue on. The Sun may have been one of Umansky's few failures. But I want to tell you, the most important thing that's happened in all the years is there's been a personal fulfillment that's meant more than anything else. I mean, to me, each day is a joyous day. And so it was for those of us who had the honor of working for him. He was what local broadcasting should be about. From developing the first election party on television to Freddie Fudd's children's program, Umansky showed the rest of us the way. Well, I had a, a, a large whip. I mean, it ran a long distance. And when I snapped it, the people jumped too. I tell you, it didn't require that. I think they felt not only the joy of what we were doing, because uh, I really believed in a free hand. You, you dealt with talented people. You don't sit on them. You don't direct them they find the way their way, and you get fresh perspective all the time. And it's what you should do. You let talent loose. You let art loose. And it creates wonderful things, and you nurture that. I was 18 years old when I started working for Martin Umansky, and I remember the longest walk in the world was when he called you to his office, because then you knew you had really screwed up. He was tough but he was fair, and when we went into his office, it was called one-hour martinizing. First of all, I'm, I wasn't mean. I was never, I've never been mean to anyone in that sense. They may think that it sounds mean, but to the contrary, it's, it's in the best interest of what the individual is doing, of course, in the best interest of the station. I cannot tolerate having misspellings appear on the air suddenly. It's intolerable, you know. Sure, I'm gonna call up and fuss. <laughs> And when the community needed him, he was there. When a plane carrying members of WSU's football team crashed in Colorado, Umansky created, with Hollywood talent, a Night of Stars fundraiser, with the money going to the victims' families. Whatever uh, immortality we have, I think is in the people around you, your own family, for one. And in many ways, his family was Cake TV. In 1979, Martin sold Cake to Chronicle Broadcasting of San Francisco. 
In 1983, he told the staff it was time for him to move on. And although it's a difficult thing to prepare for, as you know, through the years, but you know, when you get along, you realize the time comes, and I've been looking forward to it, actually. So I'm well prepared for this change in my responsibilities. Martin Umansky gave all of us a gift. He challenged the staff to be better than any of us thought we could ever be. He taught us professionalism, gave us thick skin, pointed out our failures, and exulted in our successes. And all around the country, journalists today, like me, owe their entire career to this one man. All I would like to feel is that whatever I've done has been well done. And uh, that's enough. <laughs>